good Sunday morning to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God, Hagerstown, Maryland, welcoming you to our Sunday morning worship service. Of course, you're not privy to the worship, but you will receive the word. I hope you have your Bibles with you as we have a, a challenging message today that every single one of us need in this moment in time of which we live. Uh, this is one I pray that when we get done today, will have impacted you and challenged you and you'll go away from this time together differently and touched by God. Let me just remind you that uh, we are unfolding our full schedule here in the fall. Uh, keep attuned to our web page, our Facebook page, please. Uh, but the intent is on September 5th, uh, the Labor Day weekend, we are going to start Sunday school. So I hope every one of you are going to be back in class again. And then, of course, Sunday morning, the following week, the second Sunday of uh, September, we will have, of course, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday um, school, and then we will have our Sunday evening service, 6 o'clock, with Royal Rangers and Girls Ministries, and then that following Wednesday will be our midweek live service once again, uh, our Bible study down in the sanctuary, and then, of course, we will be enjoying the... Um, youth group up in their youth chapel and there'll be children's ministries so we invite you to come be ready and of course always be safe uh, somebody asked me at prayer meeting the other day about wearing masks again and of course we're not at this point uh, demanding that but there is some wisdom in wearing masks and uh, we leave that to your discretion if you have your bibles are with you turn with me to first kings the 17th chapter and while you're turning, once again, thank you for your faithful giving. Thank you for your faithful attendance through the summer months. Uh, the needs of the church have been met. And folks, it's because of your faithfulness. And I just say God bless you. Uh, it is my privilege and honor uh, to pastor such a wonderful group of people uh, that you are. The 17th chapter, 1 Kings, beginning to read at the 8th verse of Scripture. The Bible said, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. And behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he had came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I might drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord my God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I might go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. You talk about a desperate situation. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither the cruse of oil fail, until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. This morning, for a few moments, I want to talk to you about expecting a miracle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to break the bread of life. God, we know the word will do its needed work within us. It will just hear it and drink it in and let it become part and parcel of our heart and life. Lord, may your anointing rest upon your word and your messenger this morning. And God, may we walk away today absolutely expecting, anticipating a miracle. And God, we give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you are familiar with Elijah. He literally came from nowhere on the scene and pronounced a famine and a drought. 
And as he pronounced that famine and drought, the Lord directed him to a brook cherub where he would be sustained by the water of that brook. And then ravens twice a day would come and bring him meat to eat. So God kind of sheltered him and kept him for a protracted length of time. But like everything in life, things come to a conclusion. And all of a sudden, the brook dried up and the raven stopped showing up. And God now is going to direct Elijah in a different direction. Elijah, you see, had to be tested. Elijah had to be tried in small things before he could take on larger things. That is true of you and I in our walk with God. You don't start at the top, you start at the bottom. You start with small things, and God tries you and tests you, and he, and he tests the metal of which you are made of. I remember in our life as a pastors, starting in a small pastorate and being challenged in every way imaginable, at times tempted to throw the towel in and give up, but we didn't. We persevered, we prayed, we sought the face of God, we did everything within our ourselves humanly possible, leaning on God to do what he called us to do. And um, there was some success. Thank God some souls were saved, lives were touched, families were brought into the kingdom. But as we were proven to be faithful in that small, struggling, challenging ministry to where we couldn't hardly pay our bills, we always did, but it was always a, a, a challenge of faith every week, every month, every year. God moved us to our next church, which only had about 30 to 35 people at best. The salary was not much better than what I was making at the church previously, barely enough to make ends meet. But as we had been faithful and God brought us into this church, he brought us into a place where everything literally that we touched turned to gold. Within a year's time, that congregation was running to 150. And within a year's time, the income didn't just double or triple, it quadrupled. And, and then by the time we left her, after 13 years, the income was, was uh, five or six times what it was, if not more, than when we first came. We had doubled the size of the building. We had bought 15 acres, and, and we were sitting there with 275 people Sunday morning, a full house on Sunday night, a full house on Wednesday night, and I've said all that to say this. It started in the smaller church where God tested and tried us. And then God brought us into bigger areas of, of ministry and, and, and touching hearts and lives. This is what it was with Elijah. The whole situation and testing was instigated by God. It was instigated by God's word. God laid the groundwork. God laid the guidelines. What he expected from Elijah and what he expects from you and I is this, obedience. He simply wants you and I to obey him. We see this widow woman that Elijah now is going to be directed to to sustain him. She was an undeserving person. She was no Hannah by any stretch of the imagination she hadn't smitten any of the Lord's enemies like Jael or forsaken the gods of her country like Ruth. She didn't fit into any of those categories. She was not more notable than any other heathen, in fact. Her idolatry was just as vile and her mind just as foolish and vain as anyone in that moment in time. But notice, too, that her condition it was absolutely miserable. This woman and her son were suffering from the famine along with their neighbors. Her husband had been taken. And she and her son were down to one last meal. They would eat that one last meal together and they would die. Doesn't that sound like ourselves? in our past lives before we came to Christ. Isn't that not the picture of the sinner? A desperate individual, whether it be man or woman, 
apart from God, starving spiritually, barely getting by, nothing to look forward to. Desperate people run to God. Unfortunately, the sinner many times has money in his pocket, a car in the drive, a house to live in. He don't feel that desperation until he draws near to eternity, and then so many times then it is too late. But this woman, like any sinner, was desperate and was facing death and destruction, not only of herself, but her own son. God said to Elijah that there was going to be a widow woman that would sustain him. I wonder what he pictured in his mind. Maybe as he was coming close to that city, this would be a rich woman. A woman with a beautiful household and plenty of food and a nice room for him to stay in. And just every need met. You can imagine what must have went through the mind of Elijah. I am almost certain of this. What he confronted was not what he was thinking. What he encountered was far from what he expected. And when he encountered her, the circumstances that surrounded her and that whole situation denied the word of God. And from a natural perspective, there was no way this woman was going to be able to sustain this prophet. Did God lie? Did God distort the truth? Did God send this prophet on a fool's errand? Absolutely not. So many times circumstances in our lives denies the word of God. Giving, my friends, to receive must have sounded ridiculous to that widow woman. But we either take God at his word, folks, and believe it, or we're going to perish. We're in the same position this woman was at. We're either going to stand on the word of God and we are going to make it or we're going to walk away from the word of God and we're going to perish. The singularness of this command to this woman. It wasn't given to everybody in that city. It wasn't given to a dozen widows. It was given to one person. Listen, I believe God speaks to individuals today. He speaks to you and I. I, I can testify to that. God spoke to me the other night through a text that I received from a man that I have not talked to for many, many, many years. And he was telling me how he remembered so fondly the Sunday evening services that we enjoyed so many years ago in one of the pastorates that we had in Michigan. And it was through that God spoke to me about some things relative to our startup and our services here at Valley Assembly of God. God was speaking to her and nobody else. And God speaks to you and I individually. No ifs, ands, or buts. She was now becoming involved with a person in greater need than she was. Elijah had no food. Elijah didn't have meal and oil and, and water. She had enough for one more meal and then she and her son and her mind were going to die. Elijah made a second request that seemed impossible. He said to her, before you make that cake for your son and yourself, make one for me. Make one for me. Elijah was asking her to believe for the impossible. Aren't you glad we serve a God of the impossible? No matter what circumstances of which you are faced with, our God is still able to meet the need. We need to stand tall and begin to believe that once again and stop cowering down and acting like our God is not up to the task in this moment in time of which we are living. The law of giving, my friends is a law of sacrifice and of standing on God's word. What Elijah say to her, fear not. 
My friends, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Go and do as I have said. Make me a cake first. What did Jesus say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added unto you. In other words, put God first. Put God first. With your time, your energy, your talent, your monies. And my friend, see of God will not be a debtor to you, but God will give back to you more than you've ever given to him. God will make sure that the provision of your individual life is going to be met. The law of giving to see greater things is visualized in the life of Christ. Christ told us that a seed must first be cast into the ground and die. What happened? Jesus hung on the old rugged cross. He suffered, agonized, and he died. On the third day, thank God, he rose again from the dead. But it was because of that sacrifice, because of his death on the cross, the blood that was shed. My friends, this morning, every Christian is the result of what Jesus sacrificed on the old rugged cross. Every person becoming a Christian must give their heart and their life to God and then and only then will God do things beyond our comprehension. The enormity of the potential that is locked up in our surrender. We'll never enjoy it. We'll never, we'll never see it come to life unless we actually surrender and make that choice. Take those steps and stand fast on the word of Almighty God. Luke 6 and 38. Given it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. With the same measure which you have measured out, it be measured back to you. My friends, do you believe God's word or not? 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He would sow it sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. I think of my life. I, I came across some records the other day that were records of our income when we first uh, were in the ministry those first few years. And I said to my wife, Karen, I said, how in the world did we live? But you know, somehow, some way, as we made sure every week, week in and week out, we paid our tithes and our offerings sacrificially unto God. God always stretched those, those dollars. He, I've always said this, that God put some rubber dollars in our wallet. He stretched it farther than it should have been possibly uh, been to be stretched and met the need. And here we are at this point in time in our lives, and, and we look, and God has blessed us beyond our comprehension. Why? Because we put God first. Oh, you say that was easy for you, preacher. Folks, for anyone to say that about a preacher that stands on God's word and does God's word without compromise really does not know what they're talking about. The, the price that we have paid over the years to be the men and women of God that God has called us to be is beyond the lay person's comprehension. There's enormous sacrifice, enormous pressure, enormous disappointment in, in dealing with situations in the church world. But listen, the payoff is that as we stand on God's word, God never disappoints and God always meets the need. Look in that 14th verse. For thus saith the Lord, that's what Elijah said. It wasn't just something that the prophet said. What he was conveying to her was the word of God. And God will not disappoint. God will stay true to his word. Heaven and earth will pass away, the Bible says. Jesus said it. But my word will never pass away. You can not only bank your life on it. You can bank your eternity on it. The woman acted in faith. 
She did exactly as the prophet had requested of her. She went and gave as God directed, and God richly blessed her. And that flower and oil did not diminish until rain fell upon the earth. But here's another chapter that we don't have time to get into this morning. But I, I need to point it out to you that because shortly after, this woman's son died. Now, can you imagine if that had been you, you would have said, oh God, after all the sacrifice I've made, this is, this is the end result. This is the payback. My, my, my son, my only son, he dies. But she immediately took the situation to the prophet. She took it to God, if you would. And Elijah took the boy into his chamber and put him on his bed and stretched himself on the boy and, and interceded in that young man and that woman's behalf. And God brought the boy back to life. A miracle was worked. A miracle that had its foundation. Well, that woman made a decision to obey the prophet. No, no, more than that. Obey God and make that first cake for Elijah. Let me ask you something. Are you in need of a miracle this morning? Are you in need of God's intervention in your heart and life? Is there something that only God can do? Then I say to you today, what happened to this woman can happen to you. If you will take the first step, make that sacrifice, stand on God's word, believe him no matter what the circumstances say. My friends, the same God that was the miracle worker for that woman and for Elijah is the same God that will be the miracle worker for you. All you've got to do is prepare for it by being obedient and do what God has asked you to do. Bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray, Lord, that anyone under the sound of my voice that's in need of a miracle, God, that that miracle is going to be met. Maybe even today as they obey you and go down the road that you are directing them right now. Even though, God, it's hard, it's difficult, it seems impossible, they're going to stand on your word and not on their senses. And God, I pray that you're going to meet needs all over this congregation and, and, and the lives of those that are listening via this YouTube today. I pray, Lord, if there's a man or woman that doesn't know Christ, boy, are they in need of a miracle. Oh, my friend, if you would just surrender your life to the Lord, open your heart and invite Jesus in. He will save you, forgive you, and cleanse you and give you eternal life. And I pray there might be somebody under the sound of my voice that will do that right now. I don't know what you've been waiting for, but cast all that aside and this morning fall upon God. And let God work the miracle of salvation in your heart and life, I pray. Now, Father, another week is upon us. God, may this be a week of miracles for many of our people. And I pray that God, you'll put a circle of protection around us and guide and direct our every step. And Lord, we thank you for it. And we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. I hope that we've challenged you today, and I'm believing with God that this might be the very week that the miracle you need is going to come to pass. We will see you soon. God bless you.